Step 4. Distributed and blind quantum computation. This will be our final example of uh, the application of entanglement and quantum network in this lesson. So let's talk about distributed quantum computation first. There is no reason for Alice to perform all of her quantum computation locally. Let's say that her resources are limited. Maybe she doesn't have uh, the large number of qubits or the qubits that she has are not sufficient of sufficient quality. But that doesn't mean that uh, she cannot perform her quantum computation. What she can do is she can contact her friends, Bob, Charlie, Dave and Eve, who are also in possession of some limited uh, computational resources. They also have some small quantum computers. And together they can coordinate uh, their resources and perform a larger quantum computation um, compared to if Alice did it only locally. So here Alice, Bob, Charlie, Dave and Eve, they all share some number, small number of qubits and they can entangle in some, them in some way and also they can exchange quantum information uh, by using the quantum network or they can also exchange some entangled qubits, they can uh, connect those local uh, cluster states together in some larger cluster states and then perform computation on that. And the, there are many questions of interest, such as what is the most efficient way of networking the quantum processors together? How many messages do they need to uh, um, exchange in order co to coordinate their computational efforts? And also issues like trust. How can Alice trust? Maybe she doesn't trust all of the parties involved in the quantum computation. What does she need to do? How can net quantum network help her in this situation? Also, here we are assuming that she has some quantum uh, resources. What if her quantum resources are extremely limited? So, what do we mean by extremely limited? Let's say that she cannot do anything. She doesn't have a quantum computer, but she would still like to delegate her quantum computation. And for simplicity, let's just assume that Bob has a full-fledged, very powerful, large quantum computer where he can perform any quantum computation that he wishes or that Alice would ask him to do. So in this scenario what she can just do is she can send him a classical message composed of many bits describing to Bob exactly what computation she wishes him to perform. So she needs to describe the input of the computation, the computation itself, and then the Bob will just take this information and carry out the computation and then tell Alice uh, the output, the result of the computation. But in the process, what happens is he learns everything there is to know about the computation. He learns the input, he learns the computation itself, and he learns the output. Now, what if Alice doesn't want Bob to learn some of this information or any of this information? Maybe she's trying to uh, gain a competitive edge by performing some simulation of a molecule or a new material and she doesn't want Bob to find it out because it's a trade secret. Can she, can she still do uh, something in this case? Well, she can if she's allowed to have some quantum resources. And particularly, we assume that Alice has uh, the ability to generate single qubit states. So what she can do is she generates these states and then she can randomly rotate them. Then she takes these qubits and she sends those to quantum, uh, those to Bob. So she's using a quantum channel to communicate with Bob. But these, uh, these qubits are not entangled, there's really just a bunch of single qubit states randomly uh, rotated. And then she sends him classical uh, instructions about the computation. So she directs Bob, take qubit 1, perform this operation, take qubit 2, perform that operation, take these two qubits and entangle them using this gate and so on. And in this way, Bob can perform whatever she is instructing him to do and then just return the final outcome. He communicates either in a quantum way or classically to Alice about the result of the computation. And in this way, Bob does not know the random rotations because those are still kept secret by Alice. So this prevents him from learning anything about the input, anything about the computation itself, and also anything about the output. He's basically doing this computation blind. 
He's performing some um, operations according to Alice's instructions, but because he doesn't know the initial states of the qubits, he doesn't really know what these uh, uh, operations mean. He cannot interpret them. Therefore, whatever he gets, he just performs the, uh, in, uh, the operations blindly, he gets some output, but he cannot uh, interpret this output, he just re uh, returns it to Alice. The only thing that he can learn is the upper limit to Alice's computation. For example, if she sends him uh, four qubits, then he knows that she, Alice could not have performed uh, any computation that requires more than four qubits. 